In this tutorial, we will be looking at L section matching again, and we will be going through the same example as we did before. However, we'll be making use of different features of Microwave Office, in particular measurement ports and uh, optimization, so that we can make our life easier. First of all, we just go to Project Options as usual, and we set the frequency of operation to uh, the same frequency as we used before, 100 megahertz. Select single point and then apply. We then change the global units to nano Harris for inductance and picofarads for the capacitance. And then open a new schematic. And we'll call it L section with port. You may recall that the first step in our schematic construction last time was to put a signal generator on the schematic and a resistor which represented the internal impedance of the signal generator. Then we added a voltage and current meter to be able to see uh, what impedance uh, was seen at the terminals of the signal generator. Now we can do things in a much simpler way by using a port. So let's just click on port and place it on the schematic like so. Now you may recall uh, what a port is, we've seen it in, in other tutorials. A port basically can be seen as a generator which operates at the frequency or frequencies which we defined in the project options, which has an internal impedance equals to Z, in this case for instance 50 ohms. Then the other thing that we have is uh, the ability to measure the power that goes out of the port and the power that gets reflected back into the port. And we know that once we can measure these two quantities, we can look at their ratio and also calculate the reflection coefficient. We also know that from the reflection coefficient we can calculate the impedance that is seen at that specific point. And hence um, we can use this port to carry out the L section matching by measuring the reflection coefficient that we see and then transforming it into an impedance and carrying out the uh, various circuit modifications that we need to achieve a good match. In the example that we looked at in the manual we had a generator with an internal uh, impedance of 100 ohms so we'll just modify Z here to 100 ohms and we also had a load resistor of 1000 ohms so let's just get a resistor with control L and then right click to rotate it and place it on the schematic like so and add a ground reference. Set its value to 1000 ohms and then connect it to the port. So now this is our load resistor and this port represents our signal generator with an internal impedance of 100 ohms and we've seen how this port has also got the ability to measure incident and reflective power and hence reflection coefficient and impedance. Now let's go to graphs, open a new graph and select a rectangular graph and let's call it impedance. Now we can right click on this graph, add a new measurement. Uh, we'll be looking at the port parameters in terms of measurement type and uh, in the past we've looked at S11 which is the reflection coefficient seen at port 1. This is very much the same as gamma as we've explained in the manual. Now uh, we can also directly convert the S11 which is what the simulator is actually measuring into an impedance. So we can click on Z here. You can see the Z is defined again as two indices. But these indices effectively refer to the uh, S parameter from which Z is calculated. So in this case what we are looking at is the S11 so the reflection coefficient measured at port 1 and then we are converting the value of S11 into Z11 which is the impedance seen by port 1. Now the impedance of course is a complex number like the reflection coefficient uh, and we may want to display the real and imaginary part of this impedance separately as we did before. So let's click on real and then apply and then imaginary and apply and then OK. Now you can see that uh, on the graph we set up two measurements. 
one for the real part of the impedance seen at port 1, one for the imaginary part of the impedance seen at port 1, and both of these measurements come from the measurement of the reflection coefficient, and then its conversion into an impedance. The simulation makes our life easier in that we don't have to carry out this conversion ourselves. So let's click on simulate. We can see that we've got an imaginary part equal to zero and a real part which is equal to 1000. And this is just what we would expect. We can insert a marker here. In fact we can insert two. One for the real part of the impedance and one for the imaginary part. We can also make the font of this marker a little bit bigger by going to Properties, Fonts, Markers and then increasing the font a little bit to make it more legible. Now let's go back to our schematic and as you recall the first step in that section matching is inserting a capacitor in shunt with the resistor. So let's do just that. Let's give it a value of something random, 6 picofarads, and make it tunable. Now let's simulate and go back to our impedance graph. You can see that the impedance uh, of the parallel has already decreased quite a lot. So now we have a load impedance which has got a real part of around 66 ohms as opposed to 1000. But also you can see how we've actually introduced a reactive part. Now if we open the tuner and then we start tuning the capacitor you can see that we can get to a point where the real part of the load impedance is the same as the uh, source resistance which is the first step in our L section matching. Now we need to get rid of the reactive part of the impedance and we do that as we've seen before by just inserting an inductor in series with the load we'll give it an initial value of about 400 nanoharries and we'll also make this tunable we can take away the tuning from the capacitor because we found the right value we don't need to tune any longer then we can go back to our impedance graph open the tuner we've already changed the imaginary um, part of the load impedance quite a lot but we just need to make it exactly zero so that we don't have any reactive elements, no energy is stored and it goes all into our load. And you can see that for 478 nanoharries we are close enough to uh, a zero value for our imaginary part of the impedance. So now we've carried out our L section matching and we've got uh, the uh, maximum power transfer to the load. This was a lot simpler compared to what we did before. We can even go a step further and make things easier still. So let's start again from the circuit that we had initially. So we just have a, uh, a generator with an internal impedance of 100 ohms and a load of 1000 ohms. And we'll put a capacitor in shunt with the resistor as we did before and connect it to the load. Now we right click on the capacitor, select properties and then tick the optimization box and the limit box and we'll say well my capacitor will be in the range of 0 to uh, 20 picofarads and um, you can try and find it by using a step of 0.01 picofarads and click on OK. So the reason why I have done this is that I want to use the optimizer now to try and find the value for the capacitor that will give me a real part of the impedance equal to 100 ohms. So just to recap, uh, to, to do this sort of thing you have to right click on the element uh, the value of which you want to um, be optimized to reach a certain goal, click on properties and then select the optimization box and also the limit and select a range for it and a step. And now we'll see how we use the optimizer to then um, change the value of this capacitor until it gets to a point where 
we have a, a real part of the load equal to 100. To do this, we go to Optimizer Goals, we right click, select Add Optimizer Goal, and then we select Real Part of Z11 as a measurement. We want the measurement equal to a specific goal, and that goal is 100. So we just type 100 in here, and then click OK. You can see now your goal is right there, and if you press F7 now, the optimizer window opens up and um, you can see that you've got a goal set up there which is just the one that we've put together. Let's go back to the optimizer. Now what you can do is just click on start. There are many uh, different types of optimization that you can choose and the number of iterations also can be changed but in this case I'm going to leave everything to the default and just click on start and let the optimizer do its trick you can see that it's already converged incredibly quickly um, and uh, if we go back to the schematic now you can see that it's found a value of 477 picofarads for our capacitor so now we've sorted out the capacitor value uh, we can just add an inductor here and then do a similar thing for the inductor before we do so though, let's right click on the capacitor and on properties and take away the optimization from it because we don't, we don't need to optimize the capacitor anymore we've done uh, what we needed to do with it and we don't want the optimizer to uh, try and use the capacitor and the inductor to carry out the optimization so we right click on the inductor now and uh, we'll enable optimization on this element. We also enable some limits, the lower of which would be 0 and the upper we can say 1000 with a step of 1 and then click on OK. So now when the optimizer tries to do its next optimization it won't be able to use the capacitor because we've deselected the optimization option for that element but it will be able to use the inductor which is what we want. However if we double click on our goal um, obviously at the moment is set to uh, the real part of the impedance seen by the generator um, being 100 but this is a goal that we've already achieved so we need to select a different measurement the imaginary part of Z11 again we want the measurements equal to goal option but in this case our goal is zero because we want the imaginary part of the impedance seen by the generator to be equal to zero so let's click OK and then press F7 to open the optimization window. Now if we look at the goals again you can see that in this case uh, the goal has been changed to the imaginary part of Z11 uh, being zero. If we go back to the optimizer window and click start you can see that again we've converged really quickly. I've used all the defaults uh, for the optimization and uh, we go back to our schematic and you can see that the right value for the inductor has been found. So in this tutorial we looked at two things. First of all we've used a measurement port instead of an explicit signal generator with an internal resistance. And this makes life easier not just because it makes the schematic more legible but also because the port has got the ability to measure incident and reflected power hence the reflection coefficient and also of course the impedance seen by the port. We can then use that uh, value of the impedance seen by the port to work out the um, values of the elements for our L-section matching either by using the tuner or by using the optimizer.